Thank you so much for joining me today. Please don't forget you can jump on my website, mattirwin.com, jump into the gallery, and original prints are for sale. They're very affordable, and we send them all over the world in a tube. Makes it very easy to get a little piece of my art. All right, let's get to the video. G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you and you. Thank you so much for being here. Well, today I want to talk about when the chips are down. Yes, it's true. It's starting to get very widely spread as news that there is a global chip shortage in the world. And it is even reported that Apple may too be suffering from this global chip shortage. And you may well ask yourself the question, why the hell don't we just make a few more chips a little bit quicker? Today, I wanna to talk about why chip making is so epically difficult. It's so massive to do. The investment is mind numbing and it takes years to set these factories up. It's not just something that you can do overnight. Also, I wanna talk about the fact that there are three companies that make up more than half of the total chip sales in the world, and that is Intel, Samsung, and TSMC, the Taiwan Semiconductor Corporation. These three companies hold more than half of the world's sales, and then there's about 10 or more that hold the other half, mostly of global sales. And interestingly, Sony being right at the bottom of the rest of those 10 or so companies, which from a photographic perspective and the fact that Sony are considered such a massive company in so many different ways, Sony come in as the 15th largest semiconductor manufacturer in the world. So not quite so big in this space as say Intel and Samsung. Intel obviously are massive in making chips for computers and they make up 80% of the chips made for computers. Isn't that crazy? Although that's gonna change, I would say, from 80 to perhaps 70% when Apple come out of the equation with their own M1 chips. Next, we have Samsung and they make most of the memory in the world. That's what they're known for, memory and uh, SSDs. They're huge, that's the majority of what they do. And then the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company they make obviously ARM chips and they make most of the chips for mobile phones, most of the chips, if not all of the chips for Apple. And of course, they're now making the chips for Apple's computers as well. So huge, these three companies are huge. But the problem with all of this manufacturing for the world being with these three companies, is, well, that's kind of like putting your eggs in not too many baskets. Just so you understand who all the other companies are that make up the other half or so, slightly less than half, we have SK Hynix, make RAM, Qualcomm, modems and so on, Broadcom, modems and so on, Micron, I'm not sure what they do, Nvidia, obviously graphics cards, huge, Texas Instruments, we've all heard of them, MediaTek, I have not heard of them, Infineon, SDM Microelectronics, Keoxia, AMD, they make processors for computers as well, and right coming in there at the bottom, Sony. So, these are the companies that make up pretty much, uh, there's a whole lot of much, much smaller uh, companies. We have heard of a company called Tower Jazz, they've renamed themselves. They make silicon for Nikon and I suppose a few other people, but they're so small, they don't even appear on this list. So all of the world's chips are made by these companies, more than half are made by three companies. Here's the thing though, if you suddenly decide that you want to start your own silicon chip fabrication plant, you've got an issue. They take a few years to build, and they cost billions of dollars. Now the entry level price for getting yourself one of these, a factory that makes silicon, is about $15 billion. That's a lot of cash. There's a lot of companies that can't get anywhere near that. And then the next problem about these things is, as I said, they take a long time to build and they don't last very long. Another problem with these things is you put them all together, you put all the machinery in there to make it all happen and then everything comes outdated within about five years. 
So what that kind of means is, is you need to have more than one factory. You need to kind of have a factory at year one, a factory at year three, and maybe a factory at year five. Again, there's not a lot of companies that can put down that sort of cash to have multiple f factories running at different timelines in their production capacity and cycle. So this is why it's super difficult for the world to just bring on extra capacity. So not only have we had a few issues, there's been the odd factory that's burnt down or not working or whatever, and not only have we had COVID, but of course there is an ever increasing demand for silicon. It's not about the parts that go into silicon. Silicon is largely made from sand and there's lots of that. I know it's crazy. It's made of sand, but yes, completely true. So it's not about, I, I don't believe it's about the raw materials. It's literally about the capacity to do it. Also, in order to make these plants profitable, they have to run at, a, at about a 90% or more yield. So the margin for error and failure and losing money is really, really small. They do not have a lot of tolerance if things go wrong. Also, there is such demand for these chips that these factories run 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and they just have to keep going. And not only that, but the factories are clean, these epic clean rooms. You can only have 10 parts of dust per cubic meter in these clean rooms to make a silicon chip. Now this is ridiculously more clean than you will find in a hospital where they are happy to tolerate 10,000 parts of dust per cubic meter. So it's a phenomenally clean space. It's difficult to create these spaces. It's difficult to keep them maintained. Everything about them is super tough. And then we are dealing now with chips that are made uh, with five nanometer and three nanometer process. We're dealing with parts of these chips that are one atom thick. It's insane. So in order to create the technology that does this, it is super, super difficult. So really, the main problem is not that we are incapable of making amazing technology. We are seeing it, of course, in, for example, what Apple is putting out with the ARM chips, which they call the uh, A5 through to now, I think we're up to the A14, and now they've rebadged it for their computers as the M1. Amazing tech. So it's not about designing the tech, it's about building the factories, making the factories profitable, and then keeping the factories running because they have to be ridiculously clean and they run as I said, 24-7 in order to maintain profitability because they're just so expensive to build. And then they've got to be able to keep pushing the boundaries of the next technological breakthroughs that the chip designing boffins are coming up with. So they've got to keep keeping up with that, which means the factories either need to be shut down, retooled, re remachined, new machines, the latest gear and put in, or they need to keep building new factories. So the overheads are ridiculous and the world just keeps needing more and more chips. Like if we think about it for a second, if we go back to the 70s, uh, this stuff hardly existed. It was, it was nowhere. And now we have computer chips in ev ev everything. They're just, we are surrounded by them and more and more devices are becoming electronic and more and more devices are being created. And more and more devices are being copied when once we might have had, you know, I don't know, a million of these or 10 million of these sold each year by Apple. Now there's the people copying these and we have versions of them that are, I've seen a version of this that's like $80 and they're just sold to the mass market. But of course we need chips for everything. There are chips in our lenses. There are chips in our cameras. There are chips everywhere. Cars are becoming more intelligent year on year. And now when you order a new car, they say, yeah, great, but we're suffering chip shortages. I've even read 
that some car manufacturers are moving back to analog speedos and so on just simply because it's hard to get the chips for their digital speedos. I don't know if that's true, but if that's true, that's crazy. I want my digital speedo when I buy a new modern car. I don't, I, I don't, I don't want the old-fashioned dials. I, I know we'll all be different like that, but I've always been a screen nerd my whole life, absolutely. As I said, it's even being reported that Apple are being affected by this. An another factor of all of this is, is of course, the pandemic and the fact that people are not able to move around the planet as easily as we were before. Now, how much that's impacting this, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm sure it's, even if it's one percentage point, it's slowing everything down. It's not helping things out. So this is affecting cars, it's affecting consumer electronics, and might I add, it's probably going to be affecting Canon, Nikon, and Sony. May well have a little bit to do with why we're not seeing Nikon's products out as quickly as we might have all hoped for and was rumored. It might be, I don't know. We don't know who Nikon buys their silicon from. It could be, for example, the factory that burnt down in Japan last year. It certainly was speculated that this might have an impact on Nikon. So we need to keep in mind that when some people just wanna keep sticking the boot into certain companies, some of these things are out of their control and silicon is something that we can't just do this and fix. Making silicon is an unbelievably difficult thing. Building the factories is unbelievably difficult and it's unbelievably expensive and it takes a long time. Actually manufacturing the silicon from its process from beginning to end, I've read takes three months. I'm not quite sure why, maybe in another episode, let me know in the comments below if you'd be interested, we can go through how these things are actually made. But of course, a big part of silicon would be just simply testing it. It's got to work. If you can imagine, we're making these things that have billions, billions of transistors, which is billions of yes, no. They're just gates that open and close. That's all they are. There's billions on a tiny little chip that might be the size of your thumbnail, billions. And they all have to work, and guess what? Then they all have to work for like 10 years because we expect our cameras and our televisions and whatever else to go that long. And my experience is the majority of my electronic products across any brand, any range, any company, anywhere has continued to work for that long. Some don't, maybe they cut corners. Nikon would not be, for example, a company that would cut corners about ensuring that their silicon's good. So if they've had to change factory or find a new supplier and get them to retool and do their thing, it's gonna take a little bit of time. It's gonna take a little bit of time. Anyway, I wanna thank a viewer for pointing out uh, some reading that I've been able to do about this subject. It's certainly part of the equation as to why things continue to be difficult in 2020 and 2021 in regards to man manufacturing across all sectors. It's just the way that it is. Anyway, I'd love to know your thoughts on all of this. Please let me know how your silicon is going. Is it going well? I do hope it is. Thanks for being here. It's been so good to see you. I do look forward to seeing you again. And if this is your first time here, well, please do subscribe. I'd love to see you again. Please click on the notification bell. Please share, please like. And if you'd like to watch over 300 episodes right now, just look down there and please visit us in our gallery. Okay, bye.